Hello again, art lovers. Welcome to week two of term three. Uh, this week we are looking at watercolours and we are also looking at rocks. And I'm going to show you how to capture a rock, uh, and make a portrait, if you like, of a rock. Now I've drawn this first in, um, I've used a B. You can use something a little bit harder like an H pencil uh, and you'll see I've got a number of brushes here. I've got a dart, I've got a quill. Um, the quills are very good. They, one brush will do you a whole painting. They're pretty much the same with darts. They're very, very versatile. I've also got a sea sponge here for mopping up. Now I've dampened the paper slightly um, in preparation for the first wash. And I've also prepared a test strip. The colour of the scoria is quite red. And I was experimenting with all the different, um, different browns, uh, the burnt sienna and the Venetian red. Um, and I haven't found anything that's totally successful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a very thin layer of alizarin down first. So there we are. And when I say thin, I do mean thin. So pop that down. You'll find that if you wet your paper carefully, that the wash will follow where it's wet and stop right where the wetness stops and it won't go any further. So it's a kind of a, a resist, if you like, like so. Now, we can then drop on top of that some brown. Now, <coughs> light, medium, dark. So we look at the top section of this rock is our light area. This side is the medium side and also incorporates the darks here and here. So that's how we're going to do it. We're starting with our light. Don't overplay that. And then we just build up slowly. Right? We're adding a little bit more to this side. And then we can come in with the darks. Now, I've got some sepia here, which is very strong. So, just go gently on that. I'll mix that and the red. And come in again here. Now, best to sit the paper flat at this stage. Don't try this on an easel, it'll all end up on the floor. Come across here and I'll darken this little section here. Now you see how it just diffuses at the moment because the paper's wet, so it's taking that paint and just letting it settle into position. If you've got a, a rough paper rather than smooth like I'm using, um, you'll find it'll settle in the dimples in the paper, which is a rather lovely effect. If you really want to see a lovely effect, take some of your burnt sienna and your ultramarine and mix them together for a delicious dark like that and put that on the paper and that will actually separate. The particles will separate as it's drying and it can look splendid. Once again, don't overdo it, but um, give that a little try. Something to experiment with. Now the next step, you might want something a bit more, oh, by the way, if you have overdone it and you want to take a little bit off, this is the perfect instrument, right? A natural sea sponge. Don't try using an ordinary household sponge. Um, like so, 
And you see how we can just lighten that up in those areas? I want a bit more light here. Thank you, Jeremy. That's very good. Now, I'll get some of our beautiful darks. And we're just going to put that on one side of the holes. Now, when you're drawing rocks, some of them are very round, but some of them are quite craggy. Um, I've included some examples of Lloyd Reese rocks in the ones I've posted on Pinterest. Have a look at those. He was really, really very clever with those sorts of subjects. You see, I'm just adding that to the same side of each hole, those little craters, which were bubbles in the liquid scoria. to that lovely dark again. I can then put some of that around the base here. I'm hurrying this a little bit because it would be better to wait for that to dry, of course. But, the film is running out. So, I'll get some of these darks in along the back there. There's such a thing as leaving a little air gap. That works quite well, if you're in a hurry. But you can always come back and darken your darks. Now, we've got some beautiful color over here with the, the herbs coming in the background. So we can put a little bit of that in. just brightens up the scene a little bit. Well, I think these cats are more like uh, reeds than herbs. There we go. Now, it's all about layers. So, we've done that once, and we're going to do it again. So we come back, we'll go back to our a alizarin mixture. Might go back to our original brush too. Now, clean water is important. Get up and change your water occasionally. Don't paint with mud. You'll get muddy results. So, we're just gonna build up that red a little bit in a few places now. Now, your pencil won't disappear. And that can be quite a feature. You can use that as your outline, you can use that for all sorts of things. Um, but if you want it to disappear, um, one of the miracles of painting is that you can rub out the pencil. When your watercolour is dry, you can rub out the pencil afterwards. Amazing, I know, but it's true. So come back through here now and tie up these edges and see how we've got that break from the light down to the medium section here and I'm just pushing that a little bit more each time. Now this whole process could easily take an hour and a half quite easily so don't hurry it um, if you're going to let it dry naturally and not use an air a hairdryer of some sort, um, then go and make yourself a cuppa. Come back and use it. As it's progressively drying like this, you can do more and more towards the edges. And you can also heighten the colour a little bit, just a tiny bit at a time, okay? Don't overdo it, otherwise we'll have to reach for our trusty friend the sponge. 
So I'm just building up this darker side. And then, because this is nearly dry up the top, so I've gone back there, I can actually get a little bit more detail into those shadows now. So each one of these, we can just put a, a crisper line around the edge. So, you see, I'm just doing the same side on each one. Like that. Now, some of them are quite dark. I'll get in there and make it a little bit darker. see that start to come to life now. You see how as it's drying I'm able to do a cleaner edge and that is just the right time to go back in you see. Like so. Now, some of you may have been looking at the life drawing programs on television. Um, we're going to be drawing with pastel next week. We're going to be drawing Renoir type women. Fabulous fuzzy females. And you'll be using pastel. So you can dust off your pastel collection and have a look at your pastel paper choices. Um, and of course, have a look at Renoir. Uh, I will be posting a few examples and then it's up to you to find some people who look a bit like Renoirs. See, I'm putting a little bit of blue in now. I'm getting a bit of cool in some of those shadows. So, I'll have to come back to that again and add some more. But you can see how the layers are getting stronger and stronger. Now, next week, here we are. Um, these dates are wrong, so just a week later. Um, dark pastel paper, dry pastels and pencils, and colour images. Yes, you need colour for this. Uh, anyway, thank you very much, one and all. Thanks to the production team, and I will see you all back same time, same place, next week. Cheers. <laughs>